Hello, I'm Sherry Grunska and welcome to our vodcast series and I'm glad you're joining us. I created these vodcasts or videos as most of you are probably more familiar with that term. Um, just because when we built our barn 16 years ago, I really didn't have an idea of running a huge operation with 40 horses and running a stable and all that went into it. And I really needed a, someone to help me along the way so that we didn't basically lose the farm. And so when I wrote my book, A Step-by-Step -step Guide to Starting and Running a Successful Horse Sporting Business a few years ago, I decided after talking to so many people that we really needed to have a visual to show you and to show you how we do it at our farm and to give you visuals to explain the pros and cons of doing it one way or another. And the thing is with this video, what I want to talk to you about and teach you is that uh, you can set up your horse boarding stable any way you want and that's the beauty of it. But I want to get some of the core elements um, in there and talk about it because you're not only dealing with horses, you're dealing with the people and the financials and it can add up to um, some stress if you're not financially sound in your business and your barn management. So in this video, it's all about herd management and it's not just about grouping horses together or what size herds to have, it's about your clients and that's a huge part of it and how to deal with all the different situations that are gonna come up when it comes to horses and people. So boarding your own horses, when I mean boarding, I mean taking care of your own horses on your own property is one thing. It's easy, you can decide what you wanna do with them, how you wanna feed them, and you're the owner so on your own property you can do whatever you want but when you start to board other people's horses it can get a little crazy and i was not prepared for that when we opened our business 16 years ago i i don't know i think i was living in some kind of fantasy world where i thought everybody kind of kind of thought like me <laughs> i know that's not true and i realized really quick that i had a lot to learn as far as dealing with people and their opinions or views of what good horse care is and my view of what good horse care was and how to run a business with all that and keep clients happy, keep the horses happy um, in their herds and it really became something that it took me a few years to learn um, through many mistakes and errors and then I would learn from those things and move forward and basically all these years later I always tell people you have to do what's best for your business and run it the way you want. You can't always please everybody, but if you're going to take care of other people's horses and dealing with herd management, then you really want to have some sound ideas in place as far as herds, the feeding program, grouping them, and even safety. And the whole idea is to have less turnover and above all else, have the horses be happy um, have them feel safe and to thrive in their living environment. So I'll never forget it was June of I believe it was 2005 and we opened for business. We were kind of running late in our whole building situation and we finally had the first horses come in July and between July and August I had all of a sudden I had, went from four horses to 40. And when I say it was crazy, it was crazy because not only did I have all these horses come, I had to learn their personalities. I had to see where they would go in herds. I had to get to know the owner, all the special needs of the horses, and it went crazy overnight. You know, looking back way back then, I don't know how my husband and I survived it, but we did. And I learned a lot through it. And since then, I've continued to grow and modify how we do things um, to keep the horses happy, to keep them um, very content in their living environment. And if you're going to buy a place that's already established as a boarding stable, then the herd management is probably gonna already be established for the horses that are there. And you might be changing things there that you see that you don't like, or you see a situation where a horse is stressed 
but it's definitely a little bit easier that way than starting cold like I did. And we're going to talk about both stories, both scenarios and what that looks like as far as feeding also because when you're dealing with herd management, how you're feeding the horses is really important. And we talked about that in a previous video, but I want to stress probably one of the things I want to stress the most is however you decide to feed the horses, you have to understand that it's a boarding stable. Horses are coming and going, hopefully not too often, but they have to feel comfortable and be able to get enough food to eat so that they're not stressed and that the dominant horses and the timid horses you find the right grouping for each. And we're gonna go forward with that and I'm gonna take you back into our stable. I'll show you some of our horses and we're gonna talk about all the different things you're gonna see with horses from playing to fighting to um, just hanging out and being horses. You know, the little quirks they have, the dominant versus dominant, timid versus timid, and mares versus geldings. And even things like yearlings. What do you do if you have someone that brings, you know, a seven or eight month old horse to your house, to your barn, you know, where are you gonna put that baby? And I want you to really think about it before you say yes. So um, come on with me and we'll, we'll go into our barn again and we'll talk about all this. So if you're gonna board horses and you're gonna start completely from nothing but empty land and you're going to build or set up your barn and stable a lot will depend on where you live what part of the country or even what part of the world if you're watching this because from another part temperature weather plays a huge part in it um, we're in wisconsin and we have all four seasons here um, but i'm originally from california down in southern california and having horses there the acreage that people have is a lot less. Um, the horses are in much smaller lots. They a lot of times will be in pipe stalls. Um, if they are in stalls, the turnout is very small and you don't see the herds that you would in um, maybe the Midwest where you have larger herds and a lot more land. So it really does play a big difference in how you're setting up your barn. So I wanted to show you how we do it here just to give you a visual. Um, in our big barn, we have 27 horses and I needed to find, figure out where all those horses were gonna go because we were gonna have the type of stable where everybody goes out every day as long as their weather is good and um, the horses are healthy, they're not lame or sick or for some other reason. So it was important for us to decide how we were gonna set up our paddocks. And that is the number one thing you need to figure out is how many horses do you want in a herd and what size paddocks do you want? And if you look behind me, we have a lot of our horses in separate paddocks and our largest herd size we ever go is six. And we have a herd of three. You know, it just depends on the numbers and who's getting along with who. And believe it or not, at least right now while I'm filming this, we tend to have more geldings on the property and very few mares. And so that makes kind of a difference as far as where I'm gonna put those mares and if I'm gonna have a mixed herd or not. So I want you to think about your herd size and your herd size is really important when you have clients because I really tend to believe the smaller the herd size, the less intimidating it is for your client, especially if they're a new horse owner, to go in and get the horse out of the pasture, out of the paddock to get their horse and get them out safely. If you have big herds, sometimes it can be a little bit scary, especially if it's during feeding time, especially if their horse happens to be uh, timid and maybe bottom of the herd and the dominant horse is always coming up and you don't know how to get that horse away. So when I designed our stable, my husband and I, I really wanted to make it user friendly for the client to be able to get their horse. But more importantly, I wanted to make it easy to move horses if they weren't getting along or if a horse was struggling to find a paddock mate. And once I have an established herd, I don't move them. They stay and they really um, bond. They're, they like the consistency every day when they go out and there's no new surprises and it makes for horses that um, definitely handle things much better. So I wanted to give you a visual of how we do it here and what our paddocks look like for our horses. 
And most people are surprised at how few of horses we have in each group, but I really wouldn't do it any other way. And for the longevity of a boarding business, I think it is proven to be much more beneficial as far as the soundness of a business model for a boarding stable. Okay, so the big question you're gonna get asked by people coming for a tour of your place is, do you group geldings together and mares together separately? Or do you do mixed herds? And honestly, I've seen it done both ways. I've done it both ways. And clients, they may not understand fully what it means to have a mixed herd or geldings here and, and mares here if they're just brand new horse owners and they may not understand the whole dynamics of it. We have always had a mixed herd on our, on our paddock. I do right now um, with my horses and a boarder's horse that's in with my horses. It's a mixed herd. And I've always had geldings and mares. And it really just depends on the gelding. And a lot of times history will play a part in that. If the gelding came um, from a time when he was a breeding stallion, maybe he was showing and he was breeding uh, mares, then if he was gelded later in life, sometimes it can prove difficult to put him with other geldings if there is mares around. Um, and so you have to really be careful of that. And sometimes that gelding doesn't do good in with mares because he was a breeding stallion at one time. It will depend on the gelding and it also depends on the mares because as you know, some mares um, will come into season, they'll come into season all the time and other mares never act marish ever. So it really depends on the horses you have and you really need to get to know them. We have a couple geldings on our property right now that cannot be with mares at all. They need to be away from the mares. And, um, and then we have other, a lot of geldings here who can be with mares no problem and they get along fine. And the one thing you'll find out um, if you are newer to boarding other people's horses or maybe new to horse ownership is that your geldings are gonna play and they're gonna be the ones that get into mischief and do things they shouldn't be doing and then the mares are usually gonna be the more dominant horse in a mixed herd and the ones that are often more serious and even sometimes more crabby. So you've got your definite personalities there and figuring out how to put them all together and make it work um, on a daily basis takes time and it's a learning curve. You're gonna learn as you do it and it really depends on every horse. Every single horse that comes here that comes right off the trailer and is brand new, I have to start fresh learning about that horse and you know, sometimes I'm caught off guard. I might think they're gonna get along great with this horse and it turns out they don't. And sometimes I call it right. So there is no guarantees in herd management when you have a boarding stable, but if you do it right, you can keep the risk of a horse getting injured way down and very minimal if you know it's time to pull a horse out right away. So as far as my thoughts on geldings and mares, I have no problem putting mares and geldings together as long as they both can behave themselves and it works then great. And if I have a client that doesn't agree with that, it doesn't necessarily mean I'll move their horse. If they don't trust me enough, then they may have to find a different barn, but I'm not gonna change my whole system of doing things that are stable for a person um, that maybe doesn't like how we do it. It really depends on the situation with the horse. If I can put the horse, a gelding, let's say a gelding, if I can put the gelding in with a group of geldings and it works great, no problem. But if that same person wants their horse in a certain paddock or absolutely disagrees with meld uh, geldings and mares being together, then my barn might not be the right barn for them if if they're not willing to trust me and at least walk, let me walk through it and see how the horse behaves. So some of that is client relations. A lot of it is herd management, but they are interwoven um, because if you have happy horses, you have happy clients. If you have unhappy horses or horses that are getting hurt, you're gonna have very unhappy clients and it will affect your bottom line. So I wanna just talk you through that as far as um, geldings and mares.
So I want to talk a little bit about um, dominant horses and timid horses and kind of what that's going to look like. Nine times out of ten, if someone has just purchased a new horse and they're bringing it to your stable, there's a good chance they're not going to know that horse's history. Um, they may not even know to ask the previous owner if their horse was a dominant horse or if it was a timid horse. There have been many times throughout the years where the previous living situation for a horse created a behavior in the horse that when it got here I never saw. Um, it also created, I've seen situations that are created with horses where at one barn they were very dominant and they got here they weren't. There's a lot of situations that go into that. It could be the feeding arrangement, was the horse able to get food, it could be their hours as far as when the horses were fed, you know, turnout time, were things inconsistent. I really don't know. All I can do is go by what the owner of the horse tells me and sit and watch the horse a little. Sometimes a horse's behavior will change and they might start off timid and as they've been in a herd long enough, they start to move up the channel in the hierarchy and they become more dominant as they start to get more confident. And the one thing I think that I notice the most is when I have horses come in, if I have two very extremely dominant horses, sometimes they just don't do well together in a herd because if they're both completely alpha geldings or alpha mares and um, they have to try to decide who is the one that's gonna be the top horse, if neither one backs down, that's usually when a horse gets hurt, if they're really kicking at each other um, and one refuses to back down. And there have been a few times over the years in that situation where I've pulled one of the horses and said, this isn't gonna work, I need to put him in a different herd. And usually that dominant horse, if I put him in another herd where I know some of the other horses are much less dominant, things settle down right away. And it's, I think very important for you to understand that's why I have so many paddocks and so I can move horses because if I have two paddocks with 15, 16 horses, those two dominant horses could still really go at it and now you don't have any flexibility to move a horse and the worst thing that you want is to have to call the owner and say that the horse got really hurt or worse broke a leg. You have to call the vet because the horse needs stitches. Whatever the situation, um, from mild to very terrible, like a broken leg, you don't want to ever have to do that. So if you're dealing with horse behavior and you're trying to figure out where to put them in a herd, if I see that I have two really strong, strong, dominant horses, almost all the time I never end up putting them together. They're separated. Um, because I know that neither one is going to back down until someone gets hurt. And if they get hurt, ultimately the buck falls on you and it's going to happen. So have flexibility in your herd management. Um, that's probably one of the most important things I'm going to stress in this video. So I want to talk real quick about the timid horse that um, so many people, you know, they buy a horse and they don't know if it's a dominant horse or a timid horse. If you have a horse that is put into a herd and it is definitely very timid, it doesn't want to get into any confrontation with any horses, um, it's maybe a nervous horse, it, it's nervous getting to the hay, you really want to make sure you have an environment set up for that horse where he feels like he can find a buddy, he feels like he can get to the water, he can, he can eat anytime he wants. Um, that's why we feed in separate piles for all the horses. But if you're doing round bales um, where you have maybe a couple round bales and the horses need to kind of all hover around that round bale, you really want to make sure that your herd management skills are in a place where if you see a horse that's stressed out because he cannot get to the hay, you have options to move the horse so that he can. And that is why it's so important again for as many paddocks as you can create on your farm or stable so that you have the ability to move horses because once you get him to an area where he feels comfortable with the horses he's with, he can get to the hay anytime he, he wants to eat, you'll have a much happier horse and his confidence will start to grow. And you know, some people, maybe they don't think that's important, but I feel it's 
it's of the utmost um, importance and it's valuable and it really will show in how you run a boarding stable. So whether you have a dominant horse or extreme timid horse, each one will have a place in a certain herd and it's important to figure that out and the dynamics of the horses that are going to be around them and the best way to do that is with flexibility of your paddocks. So I want to talk to you about ex-race horses, ex-show horses, horses that have lived their lives in stalls due to comp competing and it's really important to understand as a boarding stable that these horses coming in either off the track or out of the show ring, the show pen, they're going to have a history and sometimes it's uh, even something as never being in a herd. So as a general purpose boarding stable, meaning that you're gonna have all types of disciplines, all types of horses, you could have everything come to your barn from a horse that, uh, maybe a wild Mustang, to a pony, to a horse that has shown or been on the track. And specifically, I wanna talk about X-race horses or horses that have come from the show pen because they, Oftentimes, when they come to your barn, they're so used to being in stalls all the time that the herd dynamics can be overwhelming for them. I want to cite two specific examples of horses that have come here out of um, a show environment and really were probably some of the hardest horses for me to find a herd for and for them to get acclimated. We had a gelding years ago who showed on the quarter horse circuit, beautiful, beautiful horse, and he was eventually sold, and uh, the lady that bought him was still gonna show him, but on a much lower level, and she wanted him out in a herd, and he had always lived his life in a stall, so when he first got here and I tried putting him in with a herd, he seriously had no idea what to do. And he was an older horse, like seven, but you have to realize that he came from a place, a show barn, that even as a youngster, he was in a stall. He was showing the halter circuit first and then eventually was trained to be ridden. So he really had hardly any experience being out in herds. And he was one of the most challenging to get into a herd where he understood how to be a horse again and just live naturally, you know, eat off the ground, get dirty, get muddy, and just be a horse. And it took about a month for him to finally figure it out, find a buddy. But you know, the thing was, I saw his personality change overnight, which was incredible. He came as a very well-behaved, trained horse but he was very quiet and didn't show much emotion of any type. So this show horse that we had, he was one of the more challenging horses to get into a herd. And I had to really watch him and watch the herd with him and find a herd that was gonna work well with him. He honestly was not an aggressive horse. He didn't even know how to play. He had not been in the mud. It was just, everything was new for him. So for us, what we did is we introduced him to one horse at a time. I did not just throw him into a herd. I actually put him alone with just one more horse and tried to find a horse that would suit him as a, as a buddy. So for him, it was kind of like a culture, cultural adjustment, um, a shock. He was doing things he had not done before with other horses. Um, he didn't even understand the whole being, uh, going from one pile to another pile of hay. And the cool thing was that I got to see this horse blossom into an incredible horse who was so happy to be outside. And it came to the point that actually, if his owner wanted him to stay inside because of a farrier or vet appointment or something, he literally had a temper tantrum in his stall because he was so happy to be outside with other horses. And it was a really great story of seeing a horse come off the show circuit and a very um, precise way of living to being able to come back and still show maybe on a lower level as far as showing, 
but um, see his personality blossom and be a much happier horse. So this horse lived with us a long time and it was just really cool to see his transformation. I feel for me it was a blessing to be able to see him go from a show horse that lived in a stall all the time to actually becoming a horse that could act like a horse, play like a horse, get dirty like a horse, and thrive and be with other horses and still go on the weekends to the shows. And it was a really healthy balance. And that is why in herd management, at least at our barn, um, I, I feel no matter what horse is here, whether they're showing at a higher level or whether they're going to um, maybe lower level shows, um, whatever the people are doing, all the horses go out. It really is healthier for them and for their whole overall um, mental health and well-being. Another type of horse um, that I've had a hard time putting into a herd um, happened to me twice and one of them was with my own horse um, but also we had a horse that came and it was a gelding and he had been with his uh, mother the mama um, since birth and he was a show horse he had shown but he had never been with any other horses except for this mare and when he came here he was seven years old and it was kind of a shock to him and to be around other geldings he had no idea what to do and I watched him and it took about a month and it almost seemed like he was going into a depression um, which you may think that's crazy or so but I do think they can get really down um, because he had been pulled away from the only other horse he'd ever known um, except for when he saw horses when he was showing but he'd either been in a stall or been with this one mare and so when he came here and I put him in with a herd of geldings and I did it really slow I didn't put him into the herd I actually gave, put one horse with him and gradually introduced horses to him it was a shock to him he didn't know how to act and I can remember coming out and watching him and he actually went to the corner of our paddock and he put his head down just like he was in a timeout and he just faced away from everybody and it was really heartbreaking to see but I watched him and he was with a really nice gentle group of horses and I watched him slowly come around and horses trying to smell him and finally after about three weeks he started opening up um, to where he would really want to be around the other horses and I also saw him blossom too but it was quite an adjustment. So now when people ask me about herd management, I really think history plays a huge part on where these horses have lived, if they've been with other horses. And sometimes you have to go really slow, but if you're gonna run a boarding stable and you're gonna have herds, I would tell you that the most important thing is to do it slow in the beginning and do it right. And you'll have a much um, easier transition and for the people who kind of rush and throw a horse in with another horse and just have, throw their hands up and say hey they're horses they got to get along you know that's a dangerous way to do it your risk factor goes way up and the horses tend to get more stressed and more hurt and if you really want to do it right and have your reputation go up and people feel secure with how you're caring for their animals then go slow in the beginning, really learn the behaviors and see what's going on with that horse, especially if they have a history of showing and um, being isolated from other horses for periods of time. It can really make a difference. And once you start to see them blossom, you're going to have a horse that is so happy and it's going to just melt your heart when you see them running around and playing with other horses and being a horse. So one of the questions I get asked the most often is, how do we introduce a new horse to a herd? And the way we do it here at our barn is when I have a new horse come into our stable, usually I'll put them by themselves for a day or two just to kind of watch them, see what their personality is. And then I have to decide which herd they're gonna go into. And when I pick a herd that I think they're gonna be a good fit for, what I do is early in the morning, um, I will put the new horse in that paddock by himself and let him smell everything. I want him to know where the water is. 
he has to go around smelling everybody's poop and the hay piles and all that and I want to make sure he knows where the fence is and then I will introduce one horse to him at a time. So if I have an idea in my head of which horse is going to be a good or possible good pasture mate for him, I'll take the horse that I think might be a good buddy, bring him in and introduce those two together and then we go on from there and add a horse at a time until the herd is established. Now I really believe horses, if they're going to get hurt um, when you're introducing a new horse, it oftentimes will happen in that first 24 hours of them being together. So you really want to go slow with this. And some people will tell me, well, it takes time. I don't have time to do that. Well, the idea is you want to make the time to do it because if you do it right in the beginning, you're going to have a less headache later on. And there's nothing worse than introducing horses and having them get hurt. And then you have to call the client and tell them that their horse is hurt. They have to call the vet out, whatever the situation. So for me, I always put the new horse in the paddock first and then introduce one horse at a time to him. If I see that it's going good, I'll keep going. If I see that there's a red flag, then I'll stop from there and kind of observe and see what my next move is. So I wanted to talk real quickly, um, since we're talking about introducing a new horse into a herd, about some of the possible red flags pro and problems you can have. And you know, as I put a new horse in a herd and he is getting used to things, once in a while, depending on his personality, you'll have another horse, maybe the dominant horse in the group, that decides he doesn't like him. Now, I have found two dominant horses together can be trouble, and sometimes, as long as one backs down, it goes great. But if you have a new horse in the herd and he's trying to figure things out and he's timid, if they're chasing him down constantly and he can't, he can't even get a moment to breathe, to you know, get water, to eat, to me, that's a red flag. I feel that yes, they're gonna run around a little bit. Yes, they're gonna squeal, they're gonna kick at each other. But if it's continually going and the horse is stressed, and you, get, you even see him to the point where you can see the fear in his eyes, then you know there's a problem. And I feel as a business, I'm not gonna take that chance with a client's horse where I'm gonna say, okay, let them kick it out and they'll, they'll figure it out. A lot of people do that, I just personally don't. I feel that I wouldn't want my own horse treated like that and I wouldn't wanna get a call that my horse is um, hurt because they didn't have another paddock to move him to and he got beat up. So is there a guarantee in herd management? Of course not. Anything can happen and it doesn't always go the way I think I'm going to call it. But the whole plan and my goal is to have as little accidents as possible where a horse is getting hurt. So for me, I'm very quick to watch what's going on and I make sure that if I see a situation where a horse is stressed and maybe it's one horse picking on that horse, I may pull that dominant horse out for a while and put him in a separate paddock uh, for a couple days and let the new horse get his boundaries, kind of figure out where everything is and to gain his confidence. Because if you have a horse that is not confident, he needs to gain that confidence in order to be able to handle himself around the other horses. So one of the things that I've noticed when introducing horses, and it hasn't happened a lot, but it's happened a couple times throughout the years, is when I have had two horses that have lived together for years and they decide to gang up on a new horse and they actually pin them like cattle. You know, they'll put them into the fence, they'll put them in a corner, and they, you can tell that they have been, you know, communicating to where they're doing this as a team. And in that situation, if I've had that happen, and I have had it twice over the years, I've actually had to pull one of those horses out because then they're no longer a team and that deflates everything until I can get that new horse to where he's feeling comfortable and hopefully buddy up with the other horses. And over those times that I've done that, both the times I've done that, when I put the other horse back in, everything settled down and it wasn't a problem but it's just something to think about if you see that two horses are kind of tag teaming after a horse you know i would probably pull one out 
and give them a couple days in a different paddock to let the horses kind of settle down. And you just always have to remember that above all else, the more paddocks you have, the more um, flexibility you have when you do come up with a problem with horses not getting along or being overly aggressive where you can move a horse and um, it just makes the job so much easier. So if I could say anything, make your herd smaller and um, have more paddocks so that you, when you have these red flags, you can move a horse. So the one thing I wanna talk about is introducing horses, new horses to the herds and your clients. And this is really important and I want you to just think about it. And of course it's your barn so you can do it however you want. So we have barn hours at our, at our barn and, and that means that the boarders can't come till eight o'clock. And one of the reasons I had that is so that David and I can get stuff done um, and just get our work done without answering questions and doing stuff like that with people. It's much easier to get stuff done without people in the barn. The other important part of it is really um, when it comes to herd management and introdu introducing horses. I feel personally, um, when I go to introduce a new horse to a herd, it's much easier for me to do it by myself and to see what's going on than to have the client here. And the reason being is what I'm seeing, to me, I might see it and it might look like completely normal her horse behavior, everything looks good, but to them, because it's their horse, they might panic, they might get nervous, what they see could be on the opposite end of the spectrum. So what I see is normal squealing, a normal kick out here and there, a little bit of running around, whatever it is, to me is very normal horse behavior. To them, it's almost like their baby's getting beat up and they're worried. So I found it much easier that when I do all the horse introductions, when a new horse comes in, I do it without any clients here. It just goes much easier. I can keep an eye on it. And the way I look at it, it would be the same exact thing as if you take your dog to the vet and um, they need shots or they need something done. And they say, okay, we're gonna take them from you and take them into another room and do it, whatever they're gonna do, or surgery. You know, they know how emotional you are when it's your dog and sometimes they have to pull the dog out of there to do what they need to do. And it's probably better off for you not to see some of that. At least it is with my dogs. So I look at it like that. And then once I see that the horse is doing fine in the herd, I'll contact the owner, let them know, even take some pictures if I can, some video. But those initial few minutes of introduction you know, we never know which way it's going to go. We hope for the best. And usually I have a good idea of how it's going to go because I have a history of the horses here and I know how they are. But for the owner of the horse, they don't know that. So they might panic. So it's just something to think about. And if you're a brand new place and you're opening up for the first time, you need to really take this slow. And if I could say anything, I would say don't have all the horses come on the same day stagger them like ours came over the course of you know a month and a half two months and we went from four horses to 40 and that was still very stressful introducing horses putting horses in herds and it was exhausting at times and you have to learn all these brand new horses so if you're a brand new place take it slow if you're already established and you want to fine-tune how you introduce horses I just wanted to share some of the things that I do that I think over 16 years have proven to be very effective in keeping the risk man management down and keeping the horses happy, um, especially trying to find a herd that works for them and making the introductions as, pos as positive as possible. So I wanted to talk uh, for a few minutes about some of the issues that you'll probably have if you have herds when it comes to horse behavior and clients because it makes a difference. It could affect your business. Um, it could affect people leaving and it's kind of an important part of running a boarding stable. And what I want to talk about is what do you do when a client 
um, doesn't like the herd that you've put their horse in, um, maybe because the horse is playing so much, maybe his blanket is getting tore, maybe he's getting marks on his neck um, from playing face tag. There's different reasons, but not the reasons of the horse getting beat up or the horse not being able to get the food. It could be a reason of just the horse playing so much that he's, you know, got part of his mane shoot off. I mean, you know, I'm not saying all these things happen all the time, but especially with geldings, they play so much. And if you have a lot of youngsters, you're going to have even more of it. And I just wanted to talk briefly about how that kind of balances out with your clients. So through the years of boarding horses here, I've had times when a boarder has come up to me and been upset because when they brought their horse in, their horse's blanket was tore. And, um, you know, they would say, who's doing this? What horse is doing this? Is my horse getting beat up? And, you know, I'm watching the herd so I know what's going on. And what they don't realize is that their horse is one of the players in the herd and they're playing and horses do it and geldings tend to pull on anything they can and sometimes you'll have blankets that get tore and i've seen it cause issues between borders i've seen it cause issues between me and a client um, because they're upset because their blanket is tore when the horses are clearly playing so the first thing off the bat is in your boarding contract you need to have this all in there understanding that the horses are in herds, this is part of their behavior, this is how they, they play, and they need to understand that they're putting their horse out there um, at their own risk, that if a blanket gets tore, it's not, you're not gonna be moving horses all around. Um, for example, I've had people ask me, can I move my horse because he plays so much that they're worried about him getting hurt. Now, the idea is at a boarding stable, you can move horses, and you know do whatever the client whatever the client is asking of you but you have to remember that every time you move a horse it changes the whole hierarchy of the of the herd and that horse has to get acclimated and where he's at and if he's a player especially a young gelding he's going to play wherever herd he's in and a lot of we have mostly geldings here and a lot of them play and sometimes you have marks on the neck and sometimes you have torn blankets. What I would suggest is I would offer private turnout and if you have a horse that is a player and the owner doesn't want the horse playing so much, I would um, probably say, well, these are your options. You can try moving the horse or you can say we have private turnout. That is how we do it here because otherwise you're going to have people asking you to move horses for all types of reasons. And the other part of that is sometimes what happens is someone will drive into our driveway and they might see just a snippet of a interaction between two horses. Like it could have been the tail end of the horses playing, but they both bucked off kicking at each other as they took off running. And to that person coming in, they're seeing the horses and they think they're fighting. So now they're on the phone calling the owners of the horses, telling them that the horses were fighting and a horse was getting beat up. And that clearly wasn't the situation. So when it comes to herd management and your clients, you need to be very clear, very concise on how you talk to them and explain what is going on. Does it mean everyone's going to like your answers? Of course not. And sometimes you'll have someone that gets upset or says, you know, I want to move my horse. Over the years, I've decided that as I've grown as a barn owner and someone who takes care of the horses here, that you can't please everybody and you have to do what's best for you. And if I feel the horses are happy and healthy, the herds are established, then I'm not going to move a horse because someone sees a five second snippet of what they think is going on when they are uh, mistaken. And I am willing to let someone go to a different barn if they choose to over that because for me to move, keep moving horses every time someone sees a little kick out or whatever is going to make my job a lot harder. And you know, the truth is horses have good days and they have crabby days. 
And if they have a moment and their ears are pinned and they pick, kick out at each other, it doesn't mean you just move everybody because of that. So I want you to think about that if you're gonna do herds and you have a boarding stable because you're gonna be dealing with clients and I want you to get a jump ahead of how you're gonna to respond to the client if they're not happy with a situation. And back to the blankets, if a blanket, this is my personal opinion, if a blanket gets tore, that is on them as the horse owner. If their horse's blanket gets tore, you can't control what other horses are doing out there. And they need to understand that's the risk they took when they put the horse into the herd. And if the horse, if the blankets keep getting torn, they either need to go without a blanket or put the horse in private turnout. But or even maybe find a tougher blanket out there. There's some really well-made blankets that can handle horses pretty well. And it's, those are some of the little stresses that you might come across boarding horses um, and herd management. But if you know exactly what you're gonna offer and you stick to how you wanna do it and you're consistent with everybody there, it eventually kind of evens out and people understand. And for the most part, I think people settle in real nicely. So you gotta love the senior horse. And if you're gonna board horses, you may have horses that come when they're young and they stay with you for so long that they turn into seniors. And you might have horses come that are in their 20s and if they're healthy, they could be living way into their 30s. This is um, Lou, this is one of my horses and she's in her mid 30s now. She's a very old gal and we just love her. And um, the reason I wanted to talk about herd management and your senior horses is because as horses age, their needs change a lot of times. And as far as herd management goes, if you're gonna have horses together, sometimes when horses get old, they could become very arthritic. They might have other physical issues. And sometimes you need to create uh, maybe a senior pad for maybe one or two senior horses together where they can live quieter lives and they're not around all those rambunctious young horses. And I really feel that it's important um, to take special care of the real senior horses and be very aware of their surroundings, that they can eat, they can get to the food, to the water, everything safely. safely. And that my meat mean creating a separate paddock that is just for senior horses, or at least if you have one that has some physical disabilities, um, that you can put that horse in a paddock where he's not going to be chased around and he's not stressed. And um, we've always seemed to have had a senior pad here at our barn. We've had a couple horses that have lived out their last couple years in a much more peaceful situation with just a couple horses and it's really been a plus for our business and I think it's made the owners very happy and it's just something to think about especially if you have older horses here and I love senior horses and they're one of my favorite horses to board they do come with a lot of special needs but as far as herd management goes um, it's definitely worth it and um, so it's just something I want you to think about with senior horses So I want to talk briefly about outdoor board. Uh, we call it here in Wisconsin rough board because it's rough in the winter time with the weather, but horses that are living outside 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, some places call it pasture board, depending on where you live, but um, it's basically horses that are outside. They don't come into a stall at night. And when you're doing herd management, it's so important to make sure that this part is done right because the one thing that's a little different from this and our horses at our big barn where um, they're outside in herds is even if they're trying to get used to each other um, they get a reprieve when they come in in the afternoon they go into their stall they have the whole night to rest to kind of just be a horse in their stall quietly they can eat they don't have to worry about their food, fighting for their food or all that. And then the next day you put them outside again and every day gets a little better. 
as you're figure as they're figuring out the herd dynamics. In outdoor board, the horses don't get a reprieve when you put them into a herd. They are in there 24 hours a day, so they have to figure it out. And you really want to make sure they get along and they can get to the food, the water, everything um, as easy as possible and without stress. And it's one of those things that sometimes you don't see there's a problem for a couple hours. And I guess what I would recommend is if you're going to introduce a horse into a herd on outdoor board, do the same thing, put the horse in by itself, let him get used to everything, and then introduce the other horses in with him and do it early in the day so you have the entire day to watch. I heard of a story, um, a situation that happened a couple years ago. It was kind of a nightmare where a horse had been moved to a stable and got there late in the evening. They put the horse out into outdoor board in the evening overnight. And because it was dark and everyone went to bed, the horse the next morning was beat up pretty bad. Couldn't get out of the fencing and I just feel if you're going to take care of other people's horses you really need to think through how you're going to do this um, and even if it's a little bit more work on your end do it right the first time keep an eye on them all day long in the morning do it slow keep your herd smaller so the horse can get his footing and his um, boundaries figure out where everything is and importantly, above all else with herd management, if you're dealing with shelter, you have to be able to make a situation where all the horses can get into the shelter when the weather's bad. That is so important. And oftentimes I see in herd management uh, for the horses that are rough boarded, that if the shelter is too small for the number of horses, then that means there's going to be a horse out in the weather and they can get chilled, they can get sick or run down from fighting the elements. So for me, I'm really a big believer in keeping your herd smaller so that all the horses can get in the shelters and um, they'll thrive better. They'll, it's just better for them, it's healthier for them. And overall, the horse will be happier. So in this video, we talked a lot about herd management and you may be very knowledgeable about taking care of your own horses and the reason I wanted to put this into a video format was because I do believe that when you're taking care of your own horses it is so much different than actually taking care of clients horses. Um, horses are horses and their care is the same but what you do with your horses might be a little different than what a client wants for their horses and when you're dealing with all different kinds of breeds and, and disciplines and styles and turnout and herd management, it can get kind of complicated. So as a business boarding horses for other people, I wanted to just kind of open your eyes to different ways of herd management and how you want to do it, things to think about, some of the red flags that might appear in herd management and kind of how to deal with that with the client and make it a positive experience for them and also a positive experience for all the horses that will be coming to your boarding stable. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it opened your eyes a little bit to herd management and having a boarding stable and please check out more resources at probarnmanagement.com. We have blogs on there and um, all my books are on there and lots of interesting articles and thank you and we hope to see you again next time brown run ah let me start over okay bible i was gonna say bible study i gotta get a drink of water oh my god